Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Ever since I started this channel I dedicated one video per year purely to the Nintendo Switch Lite. Now we are in the middle of 2023 and I think it is time to take a final in-depth look into what I believe is one of Nintendo's best handhelds ever made. Enjoy. The Nintendo Switch Lite was released in late 2019 as an alternative to the original Switch. The OLED model was nothing but a rumor back then, and with many people hoping for an improved Switch version, perhaps a Pro model with better specs even, the initial reactions towards the Switch Lite were mixed, to say the least. That however changed fast, after people got to spend time with it themselves. It was priced at 200 euros, which was 100 euros less than the original model. It looked vastly different, coming in a smaller form factor and with a lot of features missing. This was a budget version of the Switch, but there's more to it. I bought my Switch Lite in 2020 and have been using it frequently for over 3 years now. The handheld is 8.2 inches wide, 3.6 inches tall and weighs 275 grams or 9.8 ounces, making it the lightest, as the name would suggest, and also the most portable Switch model to date. Unfortunately, the size comes at the cost of a smaller 5.5 inch LCD screen, which results in some small UI elements becoming harder to see, but the screen is not all bad. Here's a few reasons why. For one, it has the same 720p resolution as the other models, but with increased pixel density, making the image appear sharper. And second, due to the smaller screen, the touch functionality becomes a lot more viable, since icons are simply easier to reach. The device itself features a beautiful matte finish and comes in a large variety of colors and special editions as well. It also feels surprisingly robust. This is due to several factors, but most importantly, the Switch Lite does not have detachable Joy-Cons and instead is made out of a single mold. Nothing rattles, nothing creaks, and paired with a hard shell case, which are available from a variety of manufacturers, the Switch Lite becomes a total brick that I have no trouble tossing into my backpack and just go and have fun. Unfortunately, in recent years, handhelds became larger, bulkier, and also more frail. I'm not throwing shade at the OLED Switch or the Steam Deck here, I have them both, and I will probably pick up an Asus ROG Ally somewhere down the line as well. But it would never cross my mind to take those on vacation or a long trip. They're just too heavy and expensive. Handheld consoles used to be small, quick, easy and rugged, and that's where the Switch Lite excels at. I mentioned that the Switch Lite does not have detachable Joy-Cons and while that is a feature that was cut, you can still connect additional controllers like on any other Switch model. So playing co-op games on the Switch Lite is totally doable. It might not be the best experience on a 5.5 inch screen, but it works. This brings me to the make or break difference between the Switch Lite and its larger siblings. It cannot be used in docked mode whatsoever. Even when you use a HDMI adapter, it will not output video. You're stuck with what you have in front of you. This can be a bit concerning to a lot of potential buyers. After all, it's a switch that doesn't even switch. Kind of pointless at first glance. But as I said before, this thing is a textbook example of a good handheld. And if a handheld is what you're looking for, the Switch Lite might be a serious alternative to all the other models. The best thing the Switch Lite has going for it is the fact that under the hood, it's mostly the same as any other Switch. It has the same specs all across the board with the same Tegra X1 chip. So as a result, it will run games just as good, or bad, as the OLED or regular Switch. And the internal battery that can last anywhere between 3 and 7 hours is perfect for on the go and not severely downgraded from the other models. The Switch Lite also has some unique little features up its sleeve. Unlike a Joy-Con, the Switch Lite has a proper Nintendo D-pad that makes side-scrollers so much more fun as a result. Even on my OLED Switch, I use third-party Joy-Cons with a D-pad, cause sometimes a little bit more control is making all the difference. But we have to look at the other buttons as well, because the Switch Lite uses a different material for them than Joy-Cons do. They are softer to the touch, but are also responsive. You can compare them best to the Pro Controller in my opinion. You can even hear the difference with the Switch Lite being a lot softer and quieter. This might be a bit subjective, but I greatly prefer the buttons on the Switch Lite, and I have a feeling a lot of you will too. 
The analog sticks are the same as on the Joy-Cons and they are okay. I feel like they move way too easy and are not as accurate as other analog sticks out there. But as you probably heard, that's not the biggest issue. A topic that will inevitably come up when you talk about the Nintendo Switch is Joy-Con drift and the fear of it. On a regular model you can at least replace the Joy-Cons, but on a Switch Lite the whole console becomes useless, right? For starters, don't buy new Joy-Cons if yours are drifting. After a long legal roller coaster, Nintendo will fix or replace faulty Joy-Cons, that includes the Switch Lite, for free. But while this includes Joy-Cons without a warranty as well, from what I understand your Switch Lite still needs its warranty for it to be free of charge. Me on my part, I used the heck out of this Switch Lite for 3 years and it's not drifting for me. Neither did any of the Switch consoles I had in the past, which are 4 in total. Make of that information what you want. Due to the small form factor, the Switch Lite will fit better in smaller hands, which is a crucial detail if you plan to buy a Switch for a child. But even if you have larger hands, there are plenty of fantastic grips out there that will not break the bank, but will greatly increase the comfort when playing the Switch Lite for long periods of time. There are some other small differences to be pointed out here. While the Switch Lite offers gyro controls, which are great in my humble opinion, it does not feature rumble and it does not support amiibos either. When the Switch launched it did not have Bluetooth audio, with a lot of older reviews still stating that the aux input, available on all models, is the only way to use earbuds. That has since changed. All Switch models can now use Bluetooth audio and so does the Switch Lite. So if you were worried that your Bluetooth earbuds won't work on a Switch Lite, they will now. Aside from all that, the Switch Lite is simply a Switch, with the same amazing library of games. I'd love to say that since release games got cheaper, but for the most part that's not the case. For Nintendo first party titles, you can expect to pay anywhere between 40 and 60 euros, which is pricey, but in my opinion worth it. Metroid Dread, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Splatoon 3, I would say all of these are among my favorite games of the last years, but that's not all there is to see. Unlike other Nintendo consoles in the past, the third party support is downright phenomenal. From indie games to AAA games, the Switch has a vast library of old and new titles. I spent most of my time playing ports of games I played in the past, like Metro Redux, Borderlands or Skyrim. My all-time favorite game on the Switch and all-time favorite game, period, is not a first party game, but a port actually. Ori and the Blind Forest. This game is nothing short of a digital art masterpiece, and the Switch version is portable, runs at solid 60fps with no visual downgrade and perfect controls. I love this game. And I love playing it over and over again on the Switch Lite. Just like I did Hollow Knight, Stardew Valley and all the other amazing ports that were not made specifically for the Switch but feel more at home on it than on any other platform. So amidst many rumors of Switch successors being right around the corner, can I recommend buying a Switch Lite in 2023? The answer is an astounding, crystal clear yes. Let me explain. The Switch family of systems is Nintendo's greatest success in a long time and it is in their best interest to ride this train for as long as they possibly can. As it stands, the Switch is the third best selling console of all time, sharing the top three with the PS2 and Nintendo's own DS. Not only is the interest in the Nintendo Switch still high, but several big first party games are still being made. Possibly the biggest release of this year just came out recently, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It would make no sense for Nintendo to announce a new system anytime soon while their current system is doing fine. And when the inevitable new system will be announced, it is unlikely it will be an entirely new platform. Odds are it will be a quote unquote Switch 2, which will either support partial backwards compatibility or even full backwards compatibility. This is of course all speculative, but with the limited evidence we have, this seems to be the most logical conclusion. Before we wrap it all up in a summary, a last piece of advice. Consider buying a Switch Lite used. A ton of people sell their Switch Lite because they migrated over to the Switch OLED model or because they only wanted to play one or two games and now don't have any use for it. Because of that, Switch Lights in good condition will sell for as low as 100 euros. That's amazing. 
But of course you shouldn't just buy the next best offer, but properly educate yourself on what to look out for when buying consoles and make sure the seller is reputable. But if you do that, you can save a lot of money, which means more money for games. In summary, the Switch Lite is a capable, affordable handheld with possibly the most diverse library of games Nintendo ever offered. For a comparable low price of 200 euros, it offers most features other Switch models have as well, for as long as you only want to play handheld. But for that purpose, the Switch Lite is perfect due to its compact design. My only serious gripes with the Switch Lite are the smaller screen, which might make it difficult to see some small UI elements and fonts for some people, and the mediocre analog sticks. But that's it on my part, if you have any questions or simply want to share your opinion, please leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and of course, have a wonderful day.